Um, so by popular demand, um, I was just going to talk a little bit about the way I um, was scanning the uh, the negatives we previously developed. Now the uh, the negatives um, were uh, after they were dried, stored uh, on these uh, protective um, containers, and I was just going to um, try and scan in some of them. So the system I have set up uh, includes uh, it's quite simple. Um, and is is rather like how you'd scan any of them. So obviously we're just going to we're going to take a photo of the or multiple photos of of the um, uh, images. So as we see on uh, this uh, piece of film here, um, there is the um, illuminated um, diffusing piece of paper underneath and and the frames. Uh, this is a um, uh, sort of a, a mask for an enlarger or something, uh, which I, I bought, which which masks out to the thirty five millimeter size. Um, so the the setup that we have uh, here is a um, a a stable tripod uh, supporting an, a camera, um, an SLR camera, with a macro lens on it. Um, we then have a a, a chair with um, uh, these clamp. Uh, clamps on and, uh, and clamp bosses like you might use for holding chemistry experiments uh, on which uh, just fit on these 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 chair legs quite well um, this is a glass chopping board um, which is, seems to be the least expensive way to buy relatively thick glass I think this is about five pounds uh, whereas if you wanted to buy other ways of buying sheet glass it was more expensive um, this is uh, just a box it's actually a power supply for something but I'm um, just using it to prop up the system um, here we have a, um, a flash head, a studio flash head. Um, that bulb there is just the modelling bulb. There's a xenon flash bulb uh, on that too. Um, this piece of paper here is just to um, reflect a little bit of the uh, flash light up and make the illumination a bit more even. Um, and this piece of paper, as I said earlier, is, is to diffuse the light. These film pods are... Um, uh, they just exist to to space uh, everything uh, away a little bit. Now, this system has lots of advantages over um, other systems uh, because um, everything is out of focus apart from the film. The the depth of field you get with the macro lens is is very very shallow. So, um, uh, so that means that when the when the uh, the the plane that the film is in is in focus. The, the grain of the paper is completely out of focus, and um, a lot of the um, other things are out of focus. One of the issues you have with those um, inexpensive little film scanning machines that you might have seen on, on um, the internet uh, is that they have a, a light source and a plate which holds the uh, film top and bottom and a camera, all of which are, are in focus. So they use very small apertures, small sensors on them, and... Um, and, and everything's at the same distance, um, so that's that's very simple to get to work because everything can be touching or near close to touching, so um, you don't have to worry about anything being um, out of alignment. Uh, but the issue with everything being in focus is that um, uh, all of the dust is 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 in focus too. So you have you have the dust on the film, the dust on the uh, on on the on the sensor on the camera, and the dust on the um, diffusing uh, material over the light. Uh, with this, it doesn't matter if that's uh, dusty because um, because it's out of focus by quite a long way. If you've ever done macro um, photography, then then this is it. Really doesn't matter that it's out of focus. Uh, the, the, there's any dirt on it because it's out of focus. Uh, so the um, what I've been doing here is just using this this metal mask, which is quite heavy, to to hold the images uh, the the, the uh, photos flat. Um, I'm a little bit worried about it scratching some of them, although I haven't had any particular issues with that so far. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been initially finding a place to uh, to, to start the images, and then uh, this might be easier with two hands, but anyway, uh, so if I just go with this, this one, which I've already uh, taken photos for. So um, uh, the benefit of this particular system, which I'll show you in a moment, is that we get the uh, maximum possible resolution because the masks uh, are the same size as the sensor and the camera. So if we just position this to be in the uh, the the bottom left hand corner and then place this corresponding part of the uh, mask on top of it. Oops, 
uh, it doesn't really matter what part is um, uh, what we're looking at. This is just an example here. So um, on this camera, uh, uh, we then uh, we can uh, we we can see the is that the, 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 the this part of the image on the negative is out of focus. So it's a little bit difficult to see. Uh, but uh, we can um, see the particular area, and we can actually reframe this a little bit uh, by moving the uh, by moving the paper, uh, which is very convenient. Uh, this is a full frame camera, and the macro lens it is maximum magnification gives a a one to one magnification ratio, uh, which means that uh, the frame that you get projected onto the lens is the same as the mask size. Uh, which is very convenient, uh, which uh, is the, this, so this gives a maximum magnification that we can get and scanning these at the highest resolution. It takes about six um, overlapping photos to fully cover the um, this medium format range, obviously only six one if you're um, scanning in uh, full frame. Um, but, uh, but yes, so here we can uh, we can just focus, I'm um, focusing in live view at the moment because it's a little bit awkward. Um, it might not be completely, oh, you can see in the video. Uh, so we're zooming in a lot, but as you can see there, you can see the film grain. So all of the resolution is, is there as we're above that. And this was, uh, and this tripod system is very stable, so that's, that's very good. So we can, um, after that, so I focused and exposed, and worked out all the exposure things. So uh, we can just take that photo and it goes into the timer mode. And uh, the flash goes off, obviously. And we can just uh, view that image here. And see that we got the um, the image as it as it should be. Uh, so um, so with this technique, uh, you could obviously do this at um, a lower magnification and just take one image for um, per frame, or or indeed um, uh, you know multiple images from a uh, on a on a strip of film. Uh, but this um, this gives the highest quality scan, um, and it's a lot sharper than um, scanning them with a a scanner. Um, and lots of people have problems with that. I don't have a, a scanner for that. Um, but the scanners also have the similar, the same issue that um, the, the all of the uh, parts of the scanner are um, in contact, and so everything's in focus. So you have more of an issue with dust as well as the issues with sharpness. Um, so this this system has a has a lot of benefits. System. Uh, I did a similar thing um, a little while ago, but without the without the flash using continuous light. So the flash is a lot better because it's it's obviously much much brighter. Um, than continuous lights, so um, so you can use uh, the the um, a, a more appropriate aperture. Um, another thing you might want to consider is that um, a lot of macro lenses are incredibly sharp. This one is is is, is very very sharp, and um, the flatter and more perpendicular you can get everything to um, one another. You know the axis of the the lens um, being um, perpendicular to the axis of the the film. The uh, the better the um, images are because you won't have a focus shift over the image, which can be a bit of an issue when you're stitching them together. Um, but uh, but yes, yeah, so so choosing an aperture is is uh, takes a little bit of of, of thought um, because obviously you want to use and you want to um, maximize the uh, uh, the depth of field, so you have all of the image in focus if there is a little bit of an alignment issue. Uh, but also uh, use the sharpest um, aperture on the on the lens. Um, so this lens will stop down to, I think, f45, which would be far too small. We've got lots of um, uh, diffraction softening. Um, I'm using f8, which is probably a little bit small even for, for this, because um, the setup is relatively perpendicular. So um, it might be better to, to shoot everything at f5.6. But it, it's better, I think, to have a little bit softer due to diffraction um, than to have um, areas in the image where you have a patch which is in focus and out of focus, because that looks horrible and you need to, to rescan that area again. Uh, but yes, um, I will hopefully include some images that have been scanned and you can see the resolution that you get out of them. Um, the, 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 these medium format images which are taken on my, on my FlexRet are, really are quite, um, uh, quite excellent. They seem to be um, very, very sharp. Um, it, uh, lots of people uh, have raved about the Myopta. Uh, Myopta optics, um, and they have the, I think it has a Bellar lens, which is a, um, a, a Tessar type lens. So, I mean, especially for medium format, that's, um, gives plenty of resolution because obviously you're at, um, 
as you're a larger film size, you have the, the possibility of not needing all of it.